Welcome back. This is part two of my video on the Sandin PET07 power supply. Um, but in particular, it's on the optional serial uh, add-in card that we found in this power supply. Um, this is an RS232 board, and I'm trying to reverse engineer this and see exactly how it works. And then hopefully in this episode, we will get into actually sending and receiving commands over the serial bus. Uh, before we get into that, I wanted to make an amendment on my last video. So there was pin 14 and 15. 14 I was calling the current reference. I've actually found that this is instead a voltage control. If you look back at the past episode, you'll see that um, we're getting some strange signals out of this, and it didn't, it was a little bit strange. It was jumping between 12.2, 12.6 volts when I had it in current, uh, constant current mode or not. I think that was just maybe some residual sort of voltage, like fluctuation of the voltage on the board or something that we're measuring. In fact, what it is, is a 0 to 5 volt voltage controller. So you can put 0 to 5 volts into that and it will modulate the voltage between 0 and 5 volts on the power supply. So if you have a look at the back of the power supply here, you can see these terminals. There's plus 5 volt, plus or minus 12 volt and ground, which we found was pins 1 to 5 on the plug-in board. And there's also an output of 0 to 7 volt or 0 to 10 amp. And there's also the external control here, which is 0 to 5 volt. And that's what is also wired straight into pins 14 and 15, the last two, or the right-hand most pins, on this connector. So I've belled them out. They basically connect directly from the connector also through the, the output there. So I'm going to demonstrate controlling this power supply using this connector and also those two pins. And then uh, we'll get on to the serial communications Something else that bears mentioning is the identifier on this board, which I failed to show you last time. Um, it's an S-PS-0138. So if you have any information on this board or on the Sanden power supply, uh, please let us know. Link in the comments, um, because so far I can't find any information about this, um, and it's going to be really useful to have some sort of information um, or some guidance, especially uh, in the serial comms because I'm going to try and uh, just send commands and figure out just through trial and error how this works but I'm uh, probably going to miss some things and and it would be much easier if there was a reference or something I could uh, look at in future so please link that in if you have something or if you find something. So I'm going to quickly take you through the setup here it's, it's a bit crazy with the cables everywhere but here we go we've got a four wire setup on the output of the power supply so this is our two voltage sense wires and then our current load will come through these banana jacks here. That means that our voltage drop won't be measured over these cables. We get a more accurate voltage reading directly off the terminals here. So they plug into my manual DC load and you can see that we've got 4.6 volts coming out at the moment and we're, we've got a 5 amp load. The other thing we have is this power supply here and this outputs 0 to 5 volts at the moment. It can go up to 20 volts as you can see but we're just going to go between 0 and 5 volt. And that plugs into the back of the power supply here. It's, it's just hooked up through these leads here into the 0 to 5 volt terminal. And when I modulate this, you should see that the voltage here also modulates. So at the moment, we're at around 4.5 volts. If I drop that, 3.5, you see 3.8. There is a little bit of discrepancy here. That's probably due to the calibration on the power supply itself being old and not calibrated. It's probably a little bit out. You can see if I wind that right down, 1.6, we're getting 1.8 here. There you go, just under a volt. We can also go right up to almost 5 volts. There we go. This has already hit 5 volts, so I don't want to go much further than that on this. Um, so you can see that by putting a 0 to 5 volt into those terminals, we're controlling the output voltage of the power supply. So now what I'm going to do is wire that up into the expansion header and prove that that is in fact what's coming through there. Okay, so here you can see I've wired the voltage control 0 to 5 volt signal into that header. Um, so this is pins, if you look at this here, it's the last two pins on the right hand side, pins 14 and 15. So 14 is our 0 to 5 volt, 15 is our ground. Now coming back up here, you can see we've got this voltage going into that header and this is the voltage coming out. So if I modulate this you can see that's controlling the voltage out of the power supply. 
wind it up. So you can see how that's working there. So that makes a little bit more sense with the layout of this board and what we looked at in part one because we, we know that this microprocessor has an analog input and in fact it has eight and I think what they're doing is just multiplexing the eight pins and then you get an eight bit analog input reference for those eight pins. That's what they tend to do on microcontrollers, I assume that they're doing it on this too. Now we over here have the Signetics, I believe it is, and NE5018N, that's a digital to analog converter, which means it takes a digital input and outputs an analog signal. That now makes sense because that's what they would be using to generate the analog reference, the 0 to 5 volt, going through the 14 and 15 pins on this header to give us our voltage control. And I imagine this op amp has something to do with that. Um, I think you can scale the output on this using um, some sort of gain reference, um, or maybe, in fact, it's just some sort of buffering that they're using. I'm not going to completely go through all of that. I'm more interested in the serial port in this episode. But I thought that we'll just quickly bell this out and see, uh, just prove that this chip is, in fact, used for those pins. Now, what I've done is I've belled out from pin 14, which is our voltage control output from this board, and it connects here to this jumper. So if I just do that, so you see it connects here, and then we have a comment, and it says C and V, which I assume means current and voltage. Now this has no header on it, and it didn't when I pulled it out of the board, uh, which is a little bit curious. I don't know why that's not connected, because I can't find where this pin connects anywhere else on the board. It sort of has to go through this little jumper, and that's been disabled. Now on this chip, pin 18 is our voltage output, which is this pin right here. And if I trace that through, you can see it runs to this, which would then, with a jumper, be output through here. Now the input for this digital to analog converter is a parallel interface, eight pins, so DB0 to DB7. I'll show you the data sheet here. And you can see how the input for those pins goes in and switches the DAC switches, that which generates the voltage output. So I imagine that's just a simple um, binary sort of, you know, bit one to eight, and you can get uh, your 255 or 254 level outputs, uh, you know, resolution, eight bit resolution. And that's exactly what this Mitsubishi chip does. And I remember in the last video, I said, this is a latching, switching sort of logic chip. I don't know what it does. Well, that's what it does. It's driving the digital to analog converter. Um, so, I mean, in modern uh, digital analog converters, you'd have like an I squared C bus and those sort of things. But this is back in the day, and that's what they used. So now that we have a good idea of how this works, um, I think we can plug in and start playing around with the serial bus. Now, this doesn't have a jumper in it. I'm a little bit dubious about that. Um, I think we're safe to plug it in. I think what I'll do first is try and find out if we can... I might just plug into this pin, because I think if I plug this board into the power supply, I can run a little lead out from this common pin here, or this, this other side of the switch, and I can measure that with a multimeter, and I can see that through the serial bus whether I can control that pin or not, and if it's an acceptable range, I think I'll drop a jumper in there and short that out, and then we should be able to control the voltage um, supply. So our next step is to hook this up to a uh, USB to serial interface and start hitting it with bits. So how am I going to connect 232 to this board? Well I found this image online which sort of shows the pinout of a 232 plug. This is a cheap USB to 232 adapter and then I can use these breadboard type hookup wires and just plug straight in to the pins on the, on the serial adapter here so I can basically plug in like that and then on the other end on this board, I can plug into the ground and the transmit receive pins on here, which I'll uh, just bell out to these chips, and then we'll get that connected up. So here's an image online that sort of explains we want pin 2 for receive, pin 3 for transmit, and then pin 5, I believe, yet there is, is our ground connection. So it's only those three pins I'm interested in right now. Um, this doesn't do any sort of signal handshaking or anything. Obviously, there's no pins for it. Uh, so that's what we're going to connect up. And then uh, the next shot I'm going to show you will be uh, from the computer itself. There's nothing to really see on the board, um, but we'll start pinging it and seeing what we get back.